Okay, it is 4 p.m. on March 16th, Monday, and today is the day that we're kicking off the Pike Stories. This project is starting with one person, me, and it is about trying to bring back memories of the historic Long Beach Pike and to create new memories for us so that when we visit them, we can understand what was there before. The historic Long Beach Pike from 1902 to 1955 was the place to go in LA County. When it opened in 1902, it was the only one of its kind here in Southern California area. It was the place to go. 1902 was a long time ago. It was before Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Magic Mountain, all of those things. In 1955, what happened was Disneyland opened and a lot of the traffic that was coming here to the historic Long Beach Pike went over there to a more sheltered environment. There was a lot that happened between 1902 to 1955 that may have added some negative influences or some sense that it was just a little bit too crazy for some people. And so Disneyland was born. After 1955, again, there was declining attendance and there was a lot of people who were uh, not necessarily the nicest people participating at the Pike or, you know, doing shoplifting and things like that. And uh, so then in 1979, it was torn down. I am sharing with you here from Shoreline Village, which at the time in 1902, when the Pike was built, was water. So right under, I would have been standing in water in 1902 and probably also in 1979. But after that, there was a big build out to add, change the way the pike looked, add things. They added the convention center before, sometime before that. And then they wanted to adjust the way the land looked. It was part of a larger build out that happened around the city, I understand. I don't know what else happened around that time. But here we are, and so now we have Shoreline Village. And it is the village that goes on, onto the water. In the old days, it was the pike that went out onto the water. And I am working to create an experience this summer that you can participate with me on. And I'm hoping that, uh, that we can do this together. And I see that we have been joined by someone. And someone, can you put in a little, say something on the live chat so that I can see who you are? I kind of think I know who you are, but if you could please do that, that would be great. And then someone, if you could call me, that would be nice, because I think we're trying to figure out our format here. And I would like to know what, uh, Sorry to be getting on the phone while we are there, but just to make sure I don't have a message from someone. Okay. All right, great. So here we are. Um, all right. So that is the story of the historic Long Beach Pike. Now, what's the project? The project is two weeks in summer. We are going to be having events, activities, there are some things that may be up in the air right now, but we think summer is far enough away. It's between July 18th, July 20th, and August 1st. And we will be having micro events, little mini carnivals, things like that. Um, an art show, an art contest, and making a comic book. So we have a lot to do between now and July 20th. And I suppose this is as good a time as any because we have suddenly gotten a lot of time, I think. So 
The first step to do is to visualize what does this comic book look like? I want to share with you what I have created so far so you can help with me. Oh, someone went away. <laughs> I think I can visualize with you um, what we've done so far so that we can uh, work on the storyline. So the way the story goes is this. There is this door. It is the portal to other places. You see it? Other places. Other places. I don't think you can even see that. It's terrible. Okay. There is the door to other places. It's a half size door. Never mind. It's the little guys. And that door is the door that Creek has used to come here into Brickersville. And when they land at Brickersville, then they get into the door to other times. We go through the door to other times, and we are going to be working on stories that tell about the historic Long Beach Pike, starting with the double Ferris wheel. So we're making a comic book that has a little bit of history involved and it features the double Ferris wheel. If you've never been on a double Ferris wheel, don't worry about it because I haven't either. Some people out there watching this might know what a double Ferris wheel is about because they still exist and have been seen at county fairs in different parts of the country. But it was invented by two brothers called the Villar brothers, Elmer and I forget the other brother's name, Villar. And they created it. There was an engineering company that put it together. And the um, and then um, we need to understand what it looks like how it worked and find pictures of it and draw them. We create the story of how our creatures will go back and find the double Ferris wheel, take a ride on it, bring back a token, a ticket, and meet other people and find other attractions that existed on the historic pike so that we can create our next comic book. So it's, um, it's not necessarily sequential. We can find lots of information. Then we can have lots of teams working on the different comic books. That's the idea anyway. And we're trying to get motivated and do something positive during this time. So I would like to invite you to check out the sign up that I have just created to subscribe to the Brickersville Brickersville.com email list so that we can connect with you and then we can find out ways that you can participate wherever you are in the world that you can participate with us here in this forum in your forum in anywhere we want it's got to be youth friendly family friendly but other than that um could, you could be from anywhere I have a couple of people from different countries that I'm working with right now, and I hope that you will join us too. So what I had intended for us to do today, and it's 4.09, a whopping nine minutes into this monologue, was to work on sharing with you how I'm preparing for once this storm has calmed down a bit. So what I'm doing is I am working on making cloth masks. And you might say, yes, but cloth masks don't protect you from the coronavirus because that's what everyone's concerned about right now. The point of this cloth mask is to help to reduce the spread of coronavirus if you happen to have it and not necessarily know that you do, because that is possible, right? 
And we might not know for weeks that we are contagious. So the idea is not the person who is afraid of getting it. If everyone is wearing one of these, assuming we can make it comfortable enough, then it will be perfect, right? If everybody's wearing one and catching those micro droplets as they speak or whatever, and then the other guy's wearing one, then maybe very few of those micro droplets get into the air. So that's the reason I'm doing this. Okay, so the rest of this show, show is going to be about making a little mask for yourself. You can hand sew it, but I happen to have a sewing machine here, so I'm gonna use it. And I will share with you where I got this pattern. My first version without a pattern was a little thick and uh, a bit uncomfortable to wear, although I'm sure it's functional. But I'm trying another version. It's just fabric, two layers of fabric. And I've already cut out quite a bit of it. And then mostly we're working on sewing it now. It comes in four different sizes using the same pattern piece. I don't know if you can see this here. You cut here or here or here or here. And then there's some length that you add to make sure that it can um, hold the seam. Okay, so pattern pieces. For those of you who have not sewn before, some pattern pieces that you buy in the store will already have what they call a seam allowance. When people make their pattern piece from scratch, they don't necessarily include the seam allowance. They may or they may not. In this case, it wasn't included. So they suggested that you add a quarter inch on all each of the sides, right? On this side, they wanted a whole inch, but I read the instructions after I cut the pattern pieces. And so, oh, wow, we'll have to do something else here. But so basically, um, we're cutting it for two pieces of each of these. So when it opens up, it'll be a mask, and then there's a lining. So two layers of fabric that, that those ugly bugs have to go through. And so there's a good chance that they won't, right? And then the fabric, so you can rewash them and you don't have to be like buying a mask and throwing it away when you've sneezed or whatever. You can just throw it into the wash bag. And I guess if everybody wore this, then there might be a good chance that we could prevent any or a lot more infections. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to sit down because this is my sewing part. And I'm going to share with you. So in the mini carnival that we're hoping to have, there'll be lots of demonstrations. And this can certainly be one such demonstration. So a mask, because I think we might still care about masks when we are having our first event, assuming that we actually have an in-person event. So the first thing you do is you put your right sides together. That often happens when you're doing sewing. If you don't have a sewing machine, at this point, you can get a needle and thread and just sew. And here, though, I'm going to... It's only a quarter inch allowance, which means I have to, right here on the sewing machine, put the needle a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric. And so I'm doing that. And here I will, you have to lower this. This goes up and down. It holds, it, holds the fabric in place. And then I'm going forward and back a bit so that I can keep the um, keep the thread nice and tight so it won't come loose. Okay, and then we just do that. So that's step one. And then I need a pair of scissors. So I'll grab these scissors from here. So the whole point of this is that I won't necessarily be the only person 
doing these videos. I'm actually trying to find people who are interested in doing these videos with me and we can cross them out. And if we do that, then we can um, find lots of activities that we can do and experiment. So we're practicing, right? And I'm actually hoping you will volunteer and do a video so that you can practice too. fabric on the inside is called the seam and you try not to get the sewing right because you don't want to open up the possibility of your threads coming out so we just do this and we cut 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 trim 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 do, 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 do. Ah, just a couple more Okay, so I forget which size this is, but I've cut, they're really easy to cut out, and I suspect if you're doing them in bulk, it'll be a lot easier. So there we go. So now when I do it like this, it has a little bit of um, room so that I don't feel so claustrophobic. And then let's do the trimming up here too. We'll trim this one. So this one is mine. And you can use scrap fabric for this. It's very easy. It doesn't take much. And scraps, you know, you always have a little bit of fabric left over from some project. Okay. So now I'm going to sew the top and the bottom together. Again, quarter inch seam allowance. Again, you could have done all of this just by hand, and maybe I will do the next one by hand, but probably not today because I don't have my needles with me. And so here, now we have it um, like that. We can turn it inside out. And it's soft fabric, very easy to turn. So 
There is a version of this that actually has you able to put in what's called a filter. Um, okay. This looks like a kiddo's one. Yeah, this is the smallest one, but the little ones. Isn't that cute? And so the next thing to do would be to iron it. The reason you iron it is because we are going to be pressing it down. And top stitching it. And when you top stitch, you want to be able to get as close to the seam as possible. So I'm just pressing on here. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to stitch these together here and then stitch the top here and at the bottom. And then we have to figure out the size. Because as I said, um, they wanted us to have this front part be a little bit longer so that the elastic could fit, but I'm going to have to change that because I didn't read that instruction very well. So here we go. Now, this is the fabric, and I am. Oh, first, I want to do that center seam. There we go, center seam. Okay. That is the center seam being stitched. <laughs> How many times can you say center seam, center seam stitched in a row? So there we go. That's the beginning of it. Then we will sew this part. Again, my friend Linda would probably do a much nicer job of this because she is such a neat sewist. But it works in a pinch for me. Okay, so now you see that. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to turn inside out. It's a nice pattern, by the way. I'm going to explore some different patterns. 
and again the idea is that if everybody wears one then we'll be fine right oh, as fine as we can be if we choose to be in public together I'm stitching along that line. Okay. Great. Next thing to do is to gonna trim off the excess piece here because you want to straighten that edge. Then we get the elastic. So the goal it said was to get six to twelve, six to eight inches if you want over the air. But apparently there's a little bit of an issue with the over the air. So we are going to do 12 inches. So I'd say that's six and that's 12, right? That looks like 12 inches, doesn't it? And this is a kid's head. So I think that works. Give it a little bit extra. Good measure, that's what we call it. So the goal is to okay. I should put this pin in. Or not. Okay. I'll just stitch it and stitch it again. It won't be the most beautiful. So this way I won't have to worry about pinning it since I add. And it's just a prototype anyway. You would think I would have done this before, right? All right, so that looks good. Now we do the other side. Yeah, someone can make all these little threads happen. Oh, hey, are you there, buddy? Oh, you're gone. Oh. oh. So just so you guys know, this is my experiment into what this um, streaming looks like and communication mechanisms um, during this uh, time. And anyway. So apparently it doesn't give uh, times of messages and I was too busy sewing to see that a message was coming in. So, oh well. <laughs> well, thank you for checking in, my little mean for life. Mean for life.
So the next thing would be how to get people to wear the mask because, you know, if it's a little uncomfortable, maybe they won't want to wear it. Unless, of course, it's cosplay, in which case they might. So we got something there, I think. Okay, so this is it. Threads and threads and lots and lots of threads. And then I think we can just tie them off here or stitch it up or both. Okay, here we go. Ta -da! That's it. So this is one for the little kids, apparently very tiny, right? And I'll be making a few more of these, I guess, in preparation for when we get back together, just in case we need them. Ta -da. That's it. 4.32. So it's a half hour show. 10 minutes of the Pike Stories, 20 minutes of DIY.